Can we talk really quick? I just want to make the point. If we say he's silenced, that simply means that they can't any spells. Yeah. So that's what the ancient Prepare seal blocks off. Battle. Whereas if you are stunned in, uh, in Dota, you can't use abilities or items. Or Whereas move. If, yeah. Or move, yeah. 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 So it locks you down as well. But LGD, this is their base. Ted, if you want to just give a sure. quick overview of the we'll radiant base. We'll just zoom out. <laughs> nice. Like so this is the... Uh, the Ancient, this is what IG are trying to destroy in LGD's base. If we just quickly go and look at the Ancient in IG's base, this is what LGD are trying to destroy. So going back to the Radiant base, uh, they have a number of structures. You'll see all these little sort of uh, stone buildings here. This is their base. They want to defend these buildings in particular. These are the barracks. Now I'm going to be careful how I draw this. These are the barracks. <clears throat> and, Where's the turret? This, this unit here is the tower. <laughs> okay, so this tower... Um, shoots basically enemies that come within a radius of about like that it'll shoot at enemies uh killing towers gives you gold you have towers going all the way up the lane to mid and uh, you have to destroy them in order one two three four and then the finally the ancient um i'm just coming up to the middle here you'll see this river area here this is represents a sort of midpoint of the map this is this is a, the halfway point and the map is mirrored on both sides you've got the radiant side and the dire side the dire side looks uh pretty evil the radiant side looks nice and pretty yeah, go across the whole map. It gives it a nice feel for how big yeah, it is, there you actually. Go. Whoa, it is the pretty big. Look at that. Begins. Okay, well, a little jittery, but it works. It works. We also have three lanes, what we call lanes. If you look, this is top lane, this is mid lane, and this is bot lane. And you will see now, if you go to Yao on the Invoker in mid lane, you'll see he's walking in front of these creeps, trying to delay their progress down the lane. We'll explain why that is in a minute. These creeps are on your side, if you're on the Radiant side, and uh, you want to sort of help them out and uh, get them to push down the towers and structures and work their way towards the enemy base. And the guys you want to stop are the enemy creeps, these guys in red. They're not very strong on their own, and they give you money if you kill them. But uh, you need them. You can't take down towers uh, easily without creeps around you. And uh, basically, you're the sort of hero and they're the army. So you're trying to, trying to turn yeah. the tide back. You can see the plus 39 or the plus 50 whenever you get the last hit. So yeah, I was trying to manipulate how the creeps move and how he attacks them. So there, Ferrari got the, the last hit on that creep and gains a bit of gold. So Let's just look at the lanes here. Normally in Dota, when we talk about lanes we mean literally these these lanes these routes and some heroes benefit from being in some lanes and some heroes benefit from being in other lanes uh let's what what is it about lanes that means that some heroes benefit from one over another because the distance from the tower to the rest of the lane and the way that the creeps go they follow a certain path and so the radiant or the creeps at top for the dire side if you notice the way that they end up when they fight the enemy creeps it's near to the tower meaning that you're safer so if you don't necessarily have an escape mechanism or some way to get out then being near to your tower is a lot more safe whereas a hero like centaur uh war runner if you notice he's like a huge guy he's like a big beefo you know yeah yeah puts on the muscle goes to the gym very much unlike he me he does the work yeah exactly he's, he's the kind of guy that talks about gains exactly <laughs> or how much he can lift. Right. So if you notice, the creeps are a lot further from his tower. When they fight, it's at a, a, it's about this point. And look how close um, the dire tower is at the top. Whereas conversely, you have to travel all this distance right. just to get to the creep mm. wave, meaning that there are a lot of points of entry to get ganked or killed. For example, if they were to come in from this jungle area right here, they could go around on you or from here, or if they hit here, there's just a lot of multiple points of entry. Whereas yeah. If you were to gank somebody at top on the dire side, you could only come in from the front, and so you could back off in time. Yeah. And there are some heroes that you need. If you have a look in uh, IG's uh, sort of bot lane here, um, where you've got uh, YYF on the faceless void, here is a hero that needs farm and items. His chronosphere is awesome. Don't get me wrong, and they're going to they're going to combo it well with other things. But he also wants to be able to use his chronosphere and try to kill who, the one other hero, the you know, well, one of the heroes in the chronosphere before it's over. That's like a really big part of, of Faces Boy's contribution to become what we call a carry. He's the hero who, in the later game, will do most of your damage and get most of your kills. If he doesn't get the farm, in other words, the the the, the sort of gold that he needs early on. He will fall behind and it can be very hard to catch up. Yeah, each hero has like a different part of the game where they're the strongest. Like, for example, Skyrat Mage here, played by uh, DDC, is really, really powerful in the early game because he has a lot of like really cheap uh, spells that he can spam and, keep, and do lots and lots of damage with it. If you look at Skyrath Mage's ultimate, which is Mystic Flare, it can actually do 1400 damage at, the, at max level. That is extremely strong, but as the game goes on, People tend to build items that give them magic immunity. They also tend to have a lot of health. So the spells that heroes have early on become less important as the game goes on. It tends to be more about the right-click attacks, which is literally, if you look in uh, 
at any any point in the lane, really, you'll see someone just hit someone with their, their weapon, or you'll see someone just shoot a projectile. That's your right-click attack. That's your basic attack. And you can actually buy multiple items in the shop that increase it in different ways. And your attack speed goes yeah. up, and so on and so forth. So that actually becomes the main way you deal damage in the, in the later stages of the game, is literally just, just punching people. Oh, here's the stun. The concoction is yeah, there being charged up. Oh, but uh, there he was stunning himself. He couldn't get a good jump, so he didn't go. But uh, you'll, you'll often see um, the outcomes charging up, and you can hear the enemy outpost is charging up his stun, so you know it's coming. Yeah, the big thing there too was that uh, DD playing the Alchemist, the reason why he rotated to this lane is because Faith has an ability called Sacrifice, which denies a creep here at bottom. And so they were unable to really get going because every time, if you notice the creep wave, it's all the way up here. It's, uh, it's pushed up, so there's no mm. point of safety and there's no point in him being there. Yeah. As a support, you want to always be able to... There are a few types of supports. For example, Alchemist, if you'll notice, he's a, he's a melee hero. Yeah. And so he can't really harass. You're not going to uh, go up and attack another melee hero. It's just kind of pointless, whereas a ranged hero has a much easier time. Because you're uh, just going to trade bugs yeah. with them, basically. Yeah. Exactly. So you'll get the better of it. So if you notice this Lich, you know, he can trade a lot easier than the Alchemist can. So the Alchemist has to be getting kills around the map. The reason you pick a hero like this is for the aggressive, oh. aggressiveness. If you notice, he's turning the stun out. He's trying to get it on the YYF. The stun strike to follow as well doesn't matter. Razor getting the first kill of the game, and this is so huge because, as we talked about, this is your primary farmer going up against the other primary farmer, able to get that kill. This is kind of the downside of being in what we call the long lane or the uh, the unsafe lane. I don't know. Nobody ever calls it the unsafe lane. <laughs> but, the tricky lane. Yeah. It, and the hard lane. The off lane. Yeah, the hard lane. The, hard lane, the off None lane. None of them are good. You, yeah. None of that sounds good. All of it sounds really difficult. Yeah. And because of the fact that you're going to get harassed a lot, you're not going to see a lot of help come your way. And this is actually kind of unique, the setup that IG have. They've got a support with him at bottom. And the reason why Lich is so good is, of course, the sacrifice ability yeah. it it takes away one really target. He's really good at keeping the lane back because your creeps, like, if you can imagine that the creeps, their main focus, if there's not a hero around, top really, is, is they attack. punch each other. Yeah. And this should be a fairly even contest. It's 4v4 or 5v5 or whatever. The creeps will, there you go, they'll, they'll keep punching each other. Uh, but if you sacrifice, so in other words, if you remove one of your creeps, like here, you can see that they've only got three creeps going up against four. So what's going to happen is the Radiant creeps are going to win this fight, and they're going to keep pushing, and they're going to push all the way up to here, and then they're going to push all the way up to here. And then, as, as Bliss was saying, you can sit here and farm them right under your tower, nice and safe. That is the power of Lich in lane. For a, for a while in the, yeah. in the Dota 2 meta, you saw Lich in pretty much every yeah. game. They, they've been kind of increasing his power over and over. But if you look at the way Rabbit is uh, actually attacking the creeps, he doesn't auto auto attack the creeps like as in he doesn't just continuously attack them he tries to wait until they're low so he doesn't push the lane yeah he doesn't want the lane close to the terror at all because that, that adds safety for void the main this reason you do this of course is because the point of entry just becomes a lot scarier for yeah. example if the mid lane were to rotate over there are multiple ways that they could gank this razor they could come in from here they could come in through this area as well so by pushing this lane all the way up here look he's completely unprotected at this backside. That's why they have the wards there, though. The yeah. wards actually allow uh, the Razor to know if anyone's coming up the river. If you check the vision real quick, you can see exactly what Razor can see. So he can see all this river. He can actually see behind them. Now, this ward here is kind of interesting. This one. Oh. Yeah. It's ma mainly to see the void. So, so he can tell when he's moving forward in the lane and allow his supports to under understand if he's still there, who's in the lane. It's kind of... it's Information is everything in Dota. Like, knowing where the enemy is and where they're rotating, rotating to. You know, Shane, by the way, if you ping stuff on your screen... Oh, really? Try, yeah, try try holding down alt and ping stuff. Oh, okay. See what you're pinging. Okay, that's way wow. easier. This fissure, and it, look at this really quick before it goes away. It looks like golden spikes and stuff. Isn't it like golden carriage? Yeah. Is that what it is? That's, that's amazing. That looks really cool. And that's just an anim... It's, it is the fissure. You might be confused if you played a few games and you're like, that's not the fissure. It's just a cosmetic change that allows that. What and at bottom, they're going at YYF again. Oh, there's that chronosphere. And then that circle, that's Rabbit in it as well. Everybody teleporting down. Ferrari popping the ghost. This is the exorcism that Death Prophet has, but just not fast enough. The ghost have to have something to target. He's gonna get stunned down. That's what that circly thing around him is. And rotating Dyer's mid for nothing actually. If you teleport like this, like he did, you can teleport to structures. 
there is a cooldown on it. It costs money, and you have to walk all the way back to your lane. Yeah, that's huge for LGD. That's what this, the power of that center will do. That was the, the noise you hear. Like, grrr, he, it allows all his team to move really, really fast and avoid team fights when they want to. Look at all these plague wards up at the top lane, by the way. There were like seven of them. Yeah, look at his, his skill build. So, interestingly enough here, there's certain... Certain games or certain types of players like to do certain skill builds and certain. There's no set one in Dota. You can kind of do whatever you want. And he's gone for a maxing on the play board. Ooh. Ooh, that was that, nice. That they was the a, sun strike. They got a sun strike on him after he was stunned by the alchemist. That is the the, the alchemist stun is is very very handy. It's no. it's really what we call spammable. In other words, it's a spell with a low cooldown that you can cast a lot. And uh, that's I think that's basically why alchemist works. As a, as a support. Oh, that's also why he bought a soul ring as well, so he can continuously do it. Basically, he consumes 150 of his life and it g gives him 150 mana. Just enough sometimes to give you enough mana to cast it, that yeah, spell. It's a very, very good item, especially on strength heroes because yeah. they don't seem they don't have they a don't lot really of mana. Don't really worry about it. Yeah. IG smoked up. This means <clears> that they are invisible and they can't be seen on the mini map unless they run into a hero. That's the easiest way to put it. Of course, vision is very limited in Dota, but you do have these wards that give you vision, and so what this allows you to do is sneak past them, so you won't notice Ooh, them. They might bump into DDC here on the Skyrath Mage, but instead they're going to go around the back on the edge. I don't Ooh. think they're going to get yet. Oh, they, look at the Fisher. Yeah, Fisher from a little well, bit of damage. But and see, that's, that's the difference. The Fisher can sometimes block, block him so they couldn't get to him and kill him. So it, it, it's a double-edged sword. You've got to be very careful with the Fisher. So they are just it stunned him, but it meant that they couldn't chase him. A really experienced air checker player will not actually click the hero, he'll click on the ground so he can kind of manipulate where the, the fissure actually lands more effectively. Radiance middle tower yeah. is under yeah, attack. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up the mechanism on Invoker. The mechanism is an. Oh, and the stampede, I hear it going off. Yeah. Must be a top. It's top. And she gonna go down on the Venom Master. There's the combination, the Sun Strike falling from the Invoker all the way over here. And what this mechanism does is Dyer's it's essentially a heal bomb. I love attack. saying that, by the way, Ted. That was your greatest <laughs> contribution so far. The heal bomb. It allows you to heal your teammates in an area. And Lin, he's got 25 health TD, accidentally stuns himself. And the Lin's Dyer's gonna go in. One hit left, and attack. manages to get him. But Razor, in return, able to get the kill as well. They're chasing down this faceless void. Invoker with the cold snap, gonna pick him off as well. That's a three for one trade in favor of LGD. Cold snap is basically an ability that you cast it on them and it stuns them like, kind of, you'll see the, you'll hear that kind of noise and it stuns them really quickly. And every time they take damage, it also stuns them again and again. It's yeah. a really, really good. It's yeah, really think. annoying is what it is. Yeah. It's, it is as a spell, it's kind of like, Oh, it's kind of cool. and the Blink Dagger allowing him to move a short distance oh. forward, the Centaur. Just a lot of burst damage coming down. Ferrari playing the Death Prophet, that's their mid-hero. As a core, the thing you want to do least is die. You want to get as many kills as you can while dying as little as you can. Dying actually loses you gold while giving up experience and gold to everybody in the area around you that died. And this is huge for Yao, especially. He's three and zero and one already. Just with the sun strikes around the map, he hasn't left his lane at all. It's so strong that, that the sun strike, like it's not just the fact that it does damage, but it's the fact that he can contribute to any gank anywhere else on the map. That's, that's three of the kills that they've got so far. Oh, result, result of that sun. Oh, and at top, there's the stampede, the silence as well. He oh, can't okay. cast any spells. Okay, so basically, <laughs> what? Why that did so much damage is because Double Edge is a magical attack and Ancient Seal, Skyrat's Silence, it also doubles up as a magic amplification spell that allows the Centaur's uh, Double Edge to do so much more damage. Yeah, so that did about half of his health instantly, able to blow him up, and LGD in complete control of this game so far. Normally, score doesn't matter too much. You're going to see 7-1 to one and say, oh, well, that's an impossible... How do you get back into that? But it's objectives that matter, but IG haven't even gotten attack. any of the towers down yet. It's mm. funny what you were saying at the very start when you said that they Radiant's wanted to give Rabbit, like they were trying attack. to give him a boost because he's like the, the youngest or the, the least experienced, I think it was yeah. you said. Yeah. And then he got first blood and the, all the fights been carrying on somewhere like nearish him and he's been involved, tower has you know, fallen. It's, it's just, it's given them that start, 7-1. It's the kind of confidence boost you need because they must know they're up against it playing IG. Yeah, they, they have to be a little bit nervous. This If this game, we haven't talked about it, but whoever loses this game, I believe, is knocked out of the yeah. tournament completely. So, yeah. And so they would be getting eighth place. The prize pool jump alone is worth uh, trying to fight your way out of this. And IG, they did manage to take the mid tower, though. So they were able to get this objective down. 
this gives about I'd say 250 gold to everybody on your team. I'm yeah. not sure of the exact number. Yeah, it's, it's kind of irrelevant. Right. It gives you all. It gives all of your team really safe, reliable gold, while it puts the pressure on the other team. Because if you know, tow a kill Dyer's will give the equivalent of a tower kill. Attack. But it gives it Dyer's the tower kill everyone. It gives it to everybody. Yeah, so yeah. it's like everybody on your team got a kill right there. They're gonna kill the boy here. It does have promise here though. Oh. But so that much damage. No, nope, nobody can live. The like, stomp. The Sunstrike and the Skyrath Mystic Flare just explode in him. How much health? I mean, he must have had about eight or 900 health, I guess, and he lasted about two seconds. Yeah. So if you notice, both teams picking up a mechanism really early. This is going to be the core item for most teams. It doesn't really seem like it does much, right? Because it doesn't give you damage. Yeah. It doesn't really give you an escape ability. But what it does is it allows the team fights to be a lot easier. Being able to heal your team for uh, 250. You talk about this item better than anyone I know. It's like you said, uh, look at everybody's health. You know, this guy's 850, 250. You know, that's like a quarter of a yeah. heal. I mean, if you look at something like Sunstrike, just to give an example, Sunstrike, the amount of damage it does is 412. So. It's it's more you get back more than half of the damage that you yeah. can take from a sunstrike. But Look it, how much to your how whole many kills team though. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. To everyone in a in an AOE. So it is huge, and it's funny because as the game goes on, you'll see that even in the late game, Dyer's sometimes a, tower a, a good attack. mechanism, a well-timed mechanism in a fight, can turn the can turn the tide. It really can make the difference. Save a key hero. They're able to get one more spell off. Because what Blitz was saying when he was talking about pickoffs and why it's so important is that let's say we're LGD and we're fighting against IG. If all five heroes are up, that's all five of those spells and combinations oh, spells again. you'll potentially face. And that's off the Mystic Flare. Yeah. It looks like late giant, like so unholy cool. lasers yeah. from the it's sky so just cool. like smiting you to death. So let's say that you're LGD and you get a pick off on uh, Faceless Void with the Chronosphere. You know you're not going to have to face Chronosphere in that fight. It completely changes Dyer's the way you fight. You don't need to worry so much tower. about the you know, Chronosphere being picked off like that. So oh my god. You again. This center was a great pick off. Uh, a great oh, and a bottom. Oh. Able to get a double kill by himself. Oh Win. This is so huge. The stampede ability, if you pass through them, it slows them while doing damage. So able to just close the distance Dyer's on both heroes, getting fallen. a double kill and a top. They pick up an objective for themselves, Dyer's able to get this first tower down. Attack. LGD so far, complete he's level 11 as yeah, well. Yeah. So that 11, like, all his spells are much higher level than, uh, say, IG spells. So it's, he's it's, extremely strong. Yeah, and he's bought an ogre club. Ogre Club gives you extra strength. He's going to be even tougher once he picks it up. So just have a look at Centaur Wall Runner. Just walking back to the base fallen. when he picks up his items. Dyer's that was top like tower nearly 200 extra health just there. It's crazy. That bottom, they are going to go on DD. There's the chemical rage though. He is healing a little bit. The Sun Strike misses. The Mystic Flare misses. Are they going to be able to pick up DDC? No, not able to chase that down. But IG, they're grouped up. If you're going to group up like this, you have to take something down. Then look at mid. Look what a... Uh... The yeah. Invoker's doing. He's using the Forge Spirits to push the terror, and he also has the mechanism as well to heal up his creep. Yeah, this is a lot better trade for LGD, although they are, they should be able to both get towers down. LGD was able to do it with two heroes, whereas IG, they have to commit an entire, uh, their entire four-man squad just to take down this one tower, and at bottom, the initiation drop. Vizier flies as well. She is the target. He's the Venom Master. He manages to get off his ultimate. He still has the mechanism. None. No mechanism in sight for LGD as Yao is still in his middle of the lane. And at bottom, she is still alive. They do manage to pick up the tower as well. IG able to get out. And at bottom. Alchemist. There's that Chronosphere. Bro, he's just TPM. He knows the job is done. He wanted to defend middle lane. Dyer's yeah, that middle, middle he's able to pick fallen. off the tower as well. That's two towers for the cost of yeah. three of your teammates. That's not too bad if you really think about it. This is a Razor. Uh, yeah, he is a big target, but the Skyrath Mage and the Alchemist, not too I big mean, at the, all. The, the other thing is the Razor's been pretty much left alone. I mean, he's leading the way in farm. So yes, it sucks that he died, yeah. but it's like, well, I've got, the, I've got a buffer, and I've just got over like nearly 500 gold because of these two towers. Also, why, why is it the towers are so important mid? Well, let's have a look at Roshan, because he should be coming up soon. This big guy right here, if you kill him, and he, is, he does have 9,500 health, so it it's normally requires a good chunk of your team to do it. If you kill him, he drops the Aegis of the Immortal. That's your mushroom in Mario. That's your one-up. That gives you an extra life if you die. So without this tower here and without this tower here, LGD can go and do this They're actually without checking. worry about people teleporting here and teleporting here and then coming to stop you here. So you've got, they, they've got to walk 
this extra distance here will now need to be crossed and it's just much easier to get a Roshan with those towers gone. So LGD noticed that there was no IG guys on in their vision. So if you look, they have vision up here with the... I should ping on my map here. They have vision here and they, they didn't see anyone on the map. So they're like, okay, they're probably... They could be doing Roshan potentially. So they used the Sunstrike, which gives a tiny bit of vision to try and scout it out. Yeah, IG just continuing <coughs> to move around the map. They're in a bit of disarray. LGD content to just farm up on the heroes, kind of slow down the pace of the game. IG... <laughs> We said we talked about how much of a favorite they were coming in this game. LGD almost didn't even make it to the tournament. They had to play a tiebreaker just to get yeah. in. And now, you know, they've got one of the younger, uh, less experienced teams. And now they're really taking it to IG, able to get enough farm on Raven on this Razor. Once he gets his Aghanim Scepter, it's going to boost the Eye of the Storm ultimate. And the biggest thing that it allows you to do is it allows you to hit towers with it. Didn't they come? Was it good in TI2? LGD? Uh. Yes, with that this, was... with, with just the same team except for one player. Uh, two? Okay, two players. It was funny because in the qualifiers we watched them and I think they had a couple of games they had to win. Yeah, they did. And they just sort of busted it out and just ran at people for like the entire game. Uh, it's, I mean, this has been a really aggressive match in terms of team fight. Here goes oh, and over here the stun, it flies into onto the Lich. Faith. He's okay. I think what happened there was um, from Twang. If you look at Sunstrike, oh look at top oh, that that combination. Is. That's nice. If you look at Sunstrike, what it actually does is it doesn't do that damage to everyone in the area. It divides it among targets in the area. So if you hit just one person on their own, it does a lot of damage. If you hit two or three people with it, it actually does less. So I think Twang knew the Sunstrike was coming and he hugged them next yeah. to Lich, so the damage will be split between them. It was yeah. a good team play. It's a really good uh, skill shot too. Sunstrike doesn't just immediately fly. There's a there's like a pat, or two second delay on it, and so you can have to guess the path of movement that they're gonna go. As we talked about, they are gonna go to Roshan, but look, is he able to steal it? And he denies yeah. the Aegis of the Immortal. Oh my God. Everybody on IG falling down. That's three down for them, and the other two are thinking about going in. But LGD, they they actually just let IG get a really low for them. Yeah. Were they able to sneak the kill as well? Oh, uh, sure. It doesn't say. It doesn't I'm not say. entirely sure. It actually sure. doesn't say. I don't know. But able to, they were, they, IG did take down the Roshan, but they weren't able to get the Aegis on it, which is the big thing. That extra token and LGD able to get three kills on the heels of Dyer's that. They are going to go for this bottom tier two tower as well. Complete control of this game so far. Yeah, I think LGD are, are completely in charge. That's how, I mean, if you look at Race's farm, he has 133 Dyer's last hits, and Vogue has 112. The Death Prophet has 109, Venomancer has 77, so they're really, look at Faceless Void Farm, has got 47 last hits, he's not had the kind of game he needs. And so uh, just look at the gold graph a second. In 21 minutes, oh LGD are up by 10,000 gold, that is absolutely huge. It has a lot to do with them being able to win team fights and push after it though. They've been getting the split push going with Invoker and his Forge Spirits, and they've been actually getting towers after they win fights. And to even increase how, how well they can do that. The Rabbit, the Razor player, has got an Aghanim Scepter, which allows his ultimate to hit buildings and it does more damage as well. Yeah, the cool thing about LGD's lineup too is the Invoker was the big pickup here. He has an ability uh, that allows him to summon two minions, oh, and he has an item also that allows him to summon minions. So he, just by himself, is able to push out towers, whereas for IG to safely push out a tower, they need to commit so many heroes. And there's the combination again, the Sunstrike falls from the Invoker. He's now 4-0. Really getting big. Yeah. There are four heroes on every single one of them have four kills. At max combined, they have one death between the two of them. Amazing. And if you look at the minimap, you can kind of take a feel for the game. You can Dyer's see where IG are. They're kind of towards attack. their base and kind of punched up. And LGD are like, oh, you're like so aggressive up in the face. Like, look where, where DD is here, the alchemist. He's so, so aggressive on the other side of the tower. He isn't afraid at Dyer's all. Top yeah, tower and all five of fallen. IG's members, they're around this area. They're just starting um, to show signs of weakness over here. They're not entirely sure what to do. And the scary thing for them is that for them to pick off one hero, they need to commit at least a minimum of two or three. Yeah. Whereas because of the Sun Strike, just the Centaur can find one hero, stomp them into the ground, hold them in place. The Invoker's able to Sun Strike. And that's enough to kill pretty much anybody on yeah. the map.
I mean, I also think if you look at Skyrath Mage, one of the best things about Skyrath Mage, I mean, his weakness is he's very flimsy. If you look at him, he's level 11, which is which is not like low level, but he still doesn't even have a, a 800 health. That's nothing. Compare that to, say, Centaur, who has nearly 1800 health. So Skyrath Mage is a fairly weak character, but his spells are very long range. If you look at Mystic Flare, it travels a really far distance. So if Faceless Void goes in, Chronosphere's someone, he's going to have to eat a Mystic Flare yeah. right from Skyrath Mage, so it's going to be really difficult for him. The other thing is, Razor's Static Link persists through Chronosphere, so if if he can see the Faces Void coming, get a Static Link off on him, he's going to be Static Link the entire time he's in the Chronosphere, even with Faces Void punching him, and Razor's really hard to kill too, so at this stage, IG have a team that whilst it looks like it's a strong teamfight lineup, to me, it's actually against LGD's lineup, it's going to get crushed. Yeah, not to mention the Invoker, who actually has a spell called Deafening Blast, which basically shoves a load of kind of energy forward and stops people from attacking. So you, you're disarmed is what it's called in Dota. You can't actually attack. There it is there. So yeah, that's kind of neat. Is this new? Is it where it shows damage, exhort, knockback? No, I think it's been around for a while. Okay. But they might have just done it for this. I don't play the hero too much. I don't actually... I've never seen it before. That, yeah. You're not good enough, but... Really not. That's what it is. My team always complains that I can't play that hero, <laughs> but I'm actually amazing at it. There's nothing bad that I do. I'm at everything. Except for, like... That's, that's not even limited to Dota. Yeah. This is, uh, this is not the Blitz cast. This is the Noob cast. You guys can all just kind of... Oh, I can't actually use that term that I was going to use. No, go. Yeah, don't. But LGD continuing to farm up. IG... There's, oh, yeah. there's not a whole lot that they can do. They're going to try to pick off Yao over here. Remember, he does have the mechanism. He should be able to pop it. Whoa. No, he's not going to be able to pop it. He did have a little bit of time. DDC, really low HP, able to force staff over the cliff. He should be okay now. And LGD, they're on the offensive. They realize, okay, they've used everything for this. Ferrari able to get the uh, heal off from the mechanism. They're Both BKB <laughs> getting their magical immune. Look at that. It's so dramatic looking. Oh, and Ferrari gets picked off by the Sun Strike. He's gonna go down as well. I think he actually bought back for that, but being able to kill the Death Prophet, he has no ultimate up either now. So LGD, they're free to go around the map, do whatever they want now. YYF actually got a time lock, which is his third ability. So every time he auto attacks, it uh, goes up fast. He just stuns the target. Oh, and in mid, the big Echo Slam comes down, but he should go down instantly as well. Earthshaker and Venomancer go down. 1-2 off the bat, YYF playing the Void, he no longer has the Chrono Sphere, he can't enter the fight. Fortified. Faith playing the Lich, he doesn't have the Chain Frost up, they can't safely engage, and LGD realized that. They said all their ultimates are up, ours are gonna come back up soon, let's just take down this mid tower. Oh my god. Very aggressive. That Lich ult, the, the, the sort of glowing golden effect you fallen. saw, was uh, two Dyer's heroes being immune back. to magic. It's nice to pull the black king bar. We often abbreviate it to BKB just quickly as Faith gets exploded by, uh, <laughs> by the, the Sector there. The black king bar makes you immune to magic damage and stuns. So the, 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 the Lich ult was bouncing, but absolutely nothing was happening to them. Radiant's and Robin going to take down this last barracks right here. Taking down the barracks means a lot to both teams. What does it actually do for uh, LGD here, Ted? It, it makes... It makes your creeps stronger. I know that sounds weird. You'd think it would make their creeps weaker. It does kind of, but your creeps basically stay the same, but the enemy's creeps are made stronger. So you take down Arax, your creeps get tougher, they push harder. And this is the point of the game. We were talking about the what we call lane equilibrium. So you want to maintain the lanes at certain points. As the game goes on, you want the lanes to push because now it's game time and you're going to go and crush the enemy's base. So this is the different stage of the game. We're now in the sort of late mid game, one might say. And uh, you're sort of pushing into the enemy's base, taking racks, uh, and then now it's extremely hard for IG to get out because as the game goes on, you don't sit in a lane and farm. You tend to get your farm more in the jungle and from fights and from things like Roshan and Ancients. And uh, as your, your map is compressed, you get less time outside the base because you're defending so much, you end up being stuck inside your base. And you're not happy though, you're, you're sad. You're you're sad. sad. <laughs> If you look at the wards as well from LGD, they're trying to keep them even closer in. They have two really aggressive wards that they placed as they got the, after they got the wreck. So IG are like completely trapped. If they can't see them with these wards, they know A, they're either in the jungle, farming in their jungle, all, all, of, all five heroes sharing the entire jungle. Like, compare that with what LGD are doing here. Like they're farming bottom, they're farming ancients. Like, oh my God.
It's a really tough spot for IG. What would you do, Blitz, if you were trying to get out of this situation? I would have to smoke. The smoke of deceit allows you to kind of roam around the map that's visible, but it's so risky because you're committing so many heroes just to get one or two pickoffs, and you're not getting any objectives on top of that. IG, at this point in the game, effectively, they're shut out of their base. You know, they can't, they can't make moves because any time they get picked off as five, if they're going to smoke like that, they have to go as at least three. Yeah. And if they go and get picked off like that, the game is essentially over for them. The other so problem the... is it depends who they run into. Exactly. Like you go on a smoke, you bump into Centaur. And he laughs at you. <laughs> he's going he's he's to fight you back at you. Exactly. He's like, cool, now I get a bunch of you to do damage to. <laughs> and we've got Sunstrike. And luckily, my chum Skyrim Mage, who's basically barely left his side the entire game, just nukes you with the... Why uh, would the you leave his side? He's so awesome. Yeah, this common eight, dude. Just the two of them. If you notice, IG, they've had to commit so many heroes just to get any sort of movement around the map, but just the two of them able to get any two heroes down on the map. And the Chronosphere from the boy flying. DD taking a lot of damage, but that's what Ted talks about. He's zoned out of his own Chronosphere. And LGD on the move, pushing forward. IG, casualties left and right. YYF on the boy, able to buy back. And now they retreat. Chuan catches the Centaur with the stun, and LGD, they have to move back. But that wasn't too bad of a trade for them. I think they'll just continue to push. Yeah. That was what I was talking about. The Skyrath Mage range, as you said, zoned him out of his own Chronosphere. Now, Void without his Chronosphere. What is he? Here? And no farm. He's not the Look time lord anymore. He's got nothing. I think it was a big mistake to put him in the off lane. I, I don't think it worked for them. And with him not being scary, and up against a really. Razor is, has got a ton now, so. What can they do? I, I really didn't get it. There's that stun from Lin at the top lane. Oh. This is, but uh, the Sunstrike, well, not needed. This oh my god, too. The, courier the Courier Goddess! Going it. So the Courier is that little golden kite dancing around there. That's actually the golden Doomling that they've got right there. That thing's, uh, well, probably the most coveted uh, Courier in Dota at the moment. This guy, we haven't spoken about him. He's a, he's a unit that you control. You have to purchase one from the shop, and he will ferry items around for you. So let's say uh, I've bought an item. I can get the courier to bring it out to him. It's just like a courier in real life, but he can Radiant's also be controlled. And just then, the Venomancer died. He dropped the gem of True Sight, which is a gem that lets you see invisible heroes and invisible wards, and uh, both was able to recover it with the courier. Very clever play. Look at the amount of damage that Rab is doing with the ultimate. Yeah. 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 I can step yeah. in here. Continual sacks. Should be able to get the Lich just fairly soon. Ferrari pops his BKB as well, but not going to really change much for them. And LGD, they're going to get their second lane of Rax now. And once you're able to get three, you should have even stronger creeps. The, the, the IG will call this. It will be a GG, which means good game and game over. Because I don't see how they can come back. How can they come back? I know. Especially once this Roche goes down, I, I just I fail to see IG's route back into but it, the game. It's not so much maybe they want to talk about strategies for the next game, or like it's it's also... Like, they might be playing the game to win now, but they might have, to, they have time to talk about what happened, what went wrong, what heroes we can choose next game. There's a lot of strategy involved in it as well. The sad thing is, even if they were to... I mean, normally, if you think about Roshan, look at, the, look at this area that you have to fight in. This is, you, this is the one thing you don't want in Dota, is to be compressed into a space like this. Compression is bad because there are a lot of AoE spells. If you look at Earthshaker's Echo Slam, if he blinks in an Echo Roshan Slam, with all five of you around Roshan, it's easy for him to get a kill or two. You've got Chronosphere as well, but IG know that if they go into the pit, LGD are actually going to be like, great, we want yeah, to fight. Yeah, thank you. Like, look at the amount of health that Razor has. How is anyone on IG going to kill this guy? It's he crazy. has 3,200 lives. Two lives. And, and two lives. And two lives. So he essentially has like 6,400 lives yeah. to destroy. Like, crazy. I don't know. And across all that time, he's going to be doing damage with his ult, and he's going to be zapping you with his uh, his electric whip. By the way, if you're running why he's called Razor, Electric Razor. That's literally the best I can come up with. Ah! Mad, isn't it? But Razor? LGD gonna push up this mid lane. I think the best place for IG to fight, and they've taken fights here, is in this small confined area. This is the downside of pushing up a base. If you're pushing down a tower over here, you've got a lot of area to move in. But if you're pushing up a base like this, you have to be stacked up in this corner over here. But they're just gonna send Rabbit as a sacrificial offering. And they're gonna say, okay, try to kill me, but it doesn't matter. Lin gonna go in as well. They're gonna pick off the witch instantly. The tornado flies as well from the invoker. Corn the Echo Slam flies as well, but the, the mech is popped instantly. Oh. Earthshaker gonna go down as well. There's nobody so down tanky. for LGD, just so tanky. They're gonna way too far ahead. IG finally gonna call it. Good game. And LGT, LGD take game one. Dyer's top tower has fallen. They were wow. so dominant. Yeah. 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 I've gotta say, LGD seems to be one of those teams who 
they get up ahead of steam and they just we saw it in one of the games cloud nine against narvi in fact it was the third game of that playoff and cloud nine got a start and just never stopped fighting yeah. they just cut pick off pick off pick off the the combination of centaur skyrath and invoker in that absolutely won them the game fantastic play